Star Wars Squadrons podcast episode, I think seven, might be wrong on that one. It is January 29th, and I'm doing pretty good. I'm Time Bomb, your host of the podcast, our other host of the podcast, Green Fox Leader. How you doing today? What's going on, man? Hey, doing pretty good. It's a little bit late night for me, but uh, yeah, we're hanging out, um, uh, getting ready to talk to, uh, to a good buddy here and, uh, and talk about some squadrons. Oh, yeah. Nice, buddy. Always, always a good time. Talking about squadrons. Thank you for staying up late. I wanted to get this one out today. I want to try to get something fresh for the community this week. And on this episode, we've got a guest who I met way back in the day, playing on the Star Wars Squadrons Discord, jumping into the LFGs there. And little did I know, one of the best interceptors in the game was going to jump in. One of the leaders of the Spanish community, part of the Imperial Navy, maybe one of those versatile players. He can run objective, he can play support, he knows the game well, he can call, make the callouts. Reaver, how are you doing today? How are you doing, Time Bomb? Thanks, I'm doing pretty fine, and good night, good day, good afternoon, <laughs> whatever, whatever time it is you're hearing this podcast right now to all of our, uh, of our, of our audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big run. <laughs> and today, the topic that we kind of want to discuss is, I think... A really big issue in the community. It's an all-encompassing issue, I think. It's the root of the problem. It's a symptom of a bigger problem and something that a lot of people deal with in this game. If you're playing it, you're definitely seeing it. We're going to talk about dodging today on the podcast. Now, Reaver, the reason why I thought you'd be a great guest for this is because, I mean, you've played kind of everyone in the community. You know, you've been a solo Q killer you know you play the game hard that way you can play, you form up don't get me wrong but you've played a lot of solo queue your 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 battle with galactic ace which you know again congratulations for getting it the other day was it was a little tough because of some of those solo cues how do you think dodging played a factor in that well, thanks, uh, th- th- thanks for the congratulations, for, uh, first and foremost. And uh, yeah, the dodging issue is uh, more real than many people would like to accept. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, this is a case in this game in particular that it's really strange, uh, because in other competitive games, uh, dodging is punished, not just by uh, having a, a time, uh, a low priority queue, but also by subtracting some SR points, because when you dodge a match, basically you're conceding that match. You see you cannot win, and you prefer to save yourself time, and okay, let's move on to the next match, which which is okay. I mean, sometimes there are matches that I would like to dodge, but still, I uh, if I did, I should be subtracted some SR points at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, because essentially, I conceded the game and the problem here is that in this game you do not get that kind of penalty that's uh, the main issue about why dodging is so attractive to so many people and also because uh, a lot of people want to get to the higher ranks be legend galactic ace uh, yeah. whatever and that's right now the meta kind of meta in solo queue to try to do it oh god it's <laughs> so, a dodging meta that's uh, the saddest thing i've ever heard <laughs> yeah. and and that's because uh, people are coming up against um their own ranks and they they'd rather fight some low rank people to get some higher uh skill points is that is that what's going on there river yeah basically a lot of people uh when when you when you get into a match you're in the lobby be it imperial or rebel And you can actually see the level and the rank of your opponents if you brought up the score screen or the leaderboard for the match. And you can click, left-click on the names and see profile, and then you see, okay, this guy is Valiant, this guy is Legend, this guy is Galactic Ace, and, well, this guy is Hotshot, and this guy is Hero. You get an assortment of every rank out there. And a lot of people wanting to get as much high as they can when they see there are perhaps uh, a player that's similar to the skill level or even a little superior, like not by much, maybe one tier above or two tiers above or one, even one tier below or two, they get what 
many people know as rank anxiety. Like they feel, <laughs> oh my, no, no, this is serious. Yeah. Like <laughs> I had it on other games, like in Overwatch. <laughs> and they think, okay, I'm going to lose. And maybe I'll lose rank. I don't know. I should take this match. And <laughs> the temptation to dodging yeah. is there. Yeah. It's actually there. And it's pretty powerful. You but know, I mean, I have seen what, this. This I kind of have seen this too. When people get close to Galactic Ace, they can... They get that sort of rank anxiety exactly like you're you're talking about, and I've seen people get close and 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 fall, and it's it's so rough on them. You know what? I've had I've had it myself too, where I've I've lost rank and I've definitely gotten tilted. And I've got, I remember you were in the party. You saw me get <laughs> lose my cool. I think at times yeah. there too. So <laughs> it's pretty frustrating, yeah. and it's understandable. And it's understandable when someone uh, gets frustrated, especially with this game because it has some other issues aside from the dodging that are. And indirectly related to dodging, but oh, I think yeah. we'll get there eventually. I should ask, but Reaver, focusing... or just actually, I should get a little mm-hmm. bit background about your play. What is your experience with flight simulators um, in the past? Like, what flight sim games have you played? Is that before this? I'm pretty sure you, you do come from a background in that. Actually, I like you. <laughs> I like that you make that question right now because my first competitive game online was actually X Wing versus Tie Fighter, oh, okay. the spiritual predecessor of this game. Mm-hmm. Right. The only problem is that back then there wasn't a ladder. the The internet game was in its diapers course, back in the yeah. late nineties, and we didn't have uh, such sophisticated things as ladders, cross gameplay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it helped me get an understanding of how these kind of games are played. Of course, there are more complex flight sim games like mm-hmm. uh, Star Citizens right now, Elite Dangerous. But for Star Wars nerds such as me, uh, X Wing versus Tie Fighter, X Wing Alliance, and now or Star Wars Squadrons is a dream come true. Right. Like I guess that for like for many people. And basically, what I got from those games in the past, I tried to apply to this one. Bear, bear with me the differences in gameplay. Like, we didn't have drifting of in the past games. Right. Yeah, but, true. But it's something that's easy to learn, but hard to master. And that, there's where the attractive of this game comes. Like, yeah. you can learn the basics in a few games, but it will take you months, literally months, to master those little things that make the thing that make the game work. Someone made a post the other day mm-hmm. about how, like, you don't have to, or that one of the things was, like, you don't have to play the campaign before you play online. And I think that's true. You don't have to. But the time that you skip playing the campaign you will have to play equally online to learn right it's just jumping into the fire and learn it's not like you skip a step it's like it's still you're gonna have to t- spend that time really learning the mechanics and then the game is deeper than that as well and i think it's because mm. of that depth too that causes the problem with dodging too if you know what i mean kind of but yeah, yeah also yeah, it's, sorry it's... before we get back into dodging i do want to ask so then from you did keep up with different flight sims over the years or those other ones as well? Or did you just kind of get back into flight sims because of squad? Well, I went back, I went back and forward yeah. because uh, I like gaming in general. I'm not just married to flight sim games. Right. Like uh, I had my RTS uh, era, my FPS era, my <laughs> MMORPG era. But I, always, but I always had a soft spot for the flight sim games. Mm-hmm. And every time I saw a game that could offer me such a similar similar experience to what X Wing versus Tie Fighter and X Wing Alliance joined me. No matter the game franchise, I tried to jump in, right. and I remember fondly also Freelancer from Anvil Studios and Microsoft. Granted, its multiplayer was near and was nowhere near this one, but yeah. uh, it was really fun and engaging. And if you happen to have a, the luck of having a lot of friends that had the game, you could set up your own server and play Freelancer. Literally, <laughs> both the game and what the, you were supposed to do on the game. And I, <laughs> so, yeah. and I do know from, you know, just playing with you and stuff too, you're, and like you mentioned, you're into the, the Star Wars lore. So you've played a lot of the different Star Wars games as well over the years. I think you, you know, recommended Knights of the Republic or was that the name of it? Sorry. I'm, I'm not as... Oh, for sure. Right? Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So and it's kind of the and, perfect marriage here now with Star Wars Squadrons kind of coming back and you, obviously, you anticipated it before its release. Mm, yeah, well, kind of. I kind of anticipated. Like when I heard first, when we all first heard, I'd say about Project Maverick, nobody knew exactly what to expect. A lot of people was expecting some sort of rogue squadron thing. Others were expecting like uh, another Battlefront game, more focused on dogfighting and star fi- and starfighter things. But when we when the reveal trailer was showed at summer, I think it was summer, right? July or mm-hmm. something? I don't remember now. Yeah, yeah when the reveal sure. when the reveal. Exactly. When the reveal was shown out, I said, oh my god, is this true? Are they bringing back a, a spiritual successor to X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and X-Wing Alliance? I was going like, oh, all the time. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I couldn't That's believe awesome. it. 
And yeah, then I started following the Reddit. I started trying to look for discords. I tried to get every single piece of information, uh, of information from the game, which I could, which was scarce because it was uh, like I am afraid to say the passion project. Right. Like they had a lot of issues with EA to get the to give them green light to make the project. Right. So how did you find your way into the Imperial Navy then? After uh, what, is that from looking at discords and looking into the game? Yeah, it was about looking on Discord. Actually, my first clan was an Imperial Navy. It was, uh, I don't remember the game now. It was a clan focused on multiple games, which is good. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't so an exclusive Star Wars Squadrons uh, based Discord like 90% of the other Discords we have contact to is. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the thing, yeah, the thing is, uh, they said, yeah, we'll play Squadrons, but after staying day, there three weeks and be the only one of not of playing Squadrons, I say, okay, what am I doing here? I could be doing this yeah, on my true. own without the need of going into a Discord. And then I went to Wingman Wednesday on the Reddit. I browsed through a few Discords and I saw, hmm, Imperial Navy, this seems interesting. Like, Milsim, which is what can, which is what was my first clan of Star Wars uh, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and X-Wing Alliance was. And I thought, hmm, this might be a memory lane. And it turned out to be. I joined Imperial Navy. It was a mil sim. We played a little bit between people and stuff. And uh, there, that's how I landed there. I decided to stay. Only problem, most of the members uh, back in the day and that time were NA. So basically, when I woke up to play, when I could, they were going to sleep and vice versa. When right. they came, I was going to sleep or with the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing, too. So, I mean, that's probably, too, how, like, so then that time that I'm kind of playing, which is this really weird, <laughs> since I'm in North America, I don't know why I'm up. I, I just, I mean, hey, the pandemic has done things to people and my sleep schedule is now completely different <laughs> than it was. So yeah, I guess I'm, but... I'm up at this time now, which is like North America, <laughs> like 4 a.m. basically, something like that. Before I go to work, I usually play. And I met a lot of the different, you know, people, different time zone people. And that's who I play with, people like Reaver. And I've seen, you know, Reaver, mm -hmm. Reaver progress. And, you know, he's, you know, he forms up with people but you've played a lot of those solo queue games and like forming up with random people, just exactly how we met. You know, I think I, I've kind of gotten away from that. Uh, I mean, definitely don't go to the Star Wars Squadrons, but you will just go into solo queue now too. So what has that experience been like for you, Reaver? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag. I won't lie to you. There are certainly great moments on it. And there are moments that you're like, what the hell? How did this happen? <laughs> how could this Do you find happen to and do you find yep. yourself being an ultra flex? Do you find yourself, uh, you know, usually when you're playing with a five stack, you grab one style of ship, one type of ship, one style of gameplay, and you kind of hone in on it. But when you're solo queuing, are you having to jump all over the place and being, like I said, uh, an ultra flex or what? Yeah, most of the times that's how what you got to do when you're in solo queue. Like you're, you're always going to go to your strongest play. Like I'm a main interceptor, I've just said, and I always start as an interceptor. To balance uh, the skill in dogfight of the enemy team, but also to uh, get a quick look of what they have, what they're doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if I see nobody is able to get the kills, I try to stay interceptor for most of the game, be for covering them when they do their attack runs, or yeah. to defend the uh, objectives when they're on the attack of the enemy team. But if I see my team has decent dogfighting skills, I say, okay, maybe I should switch now to either a bomber, a fighter or even a support. Like, support is uh, not exactly the best thing to do in solo queue. Mm -hmm. Penguin, we could tell you that because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's uh, one pivotal ship, but it's going to be the focus of so much attention, and you need to really, really, really rely on your teammates to come out alive yeah. more than once. And in solo queue, even when you try to go voice IP with Mike in the in-game, many times your, your warnings or your askings will land on death deft airs be it because they don't have turned on the by the voice chat or simply because they're too busy doing what they're doing right now but yeah as a solo player you should try to flex a little bit try to adapt to the situation uh if you're a one-trick pony and you happen to land for example in a team that's everybody's an interceptor okay maybe we will get the uh dog fighting done there but who's gonna do the damage eventually they'll flip and we need someone to do the damage Right. There's when then yeah. there's where you start to thinking about okay maybe I should go bomber fighter objective whatever. So now we see the struggle of the solo queue player, and I yeah. think it's this struggle and this challenge that they kind of come across that leads them into dodging. How often do you think you see people dodging in matchmaking? 
unfortunately more times than I would like to to tell. Uh, but let me tell you one thing. Dodging is because what we talked before about rank anxiety, and it, it's normal to have rank anxiety. But the thing is, people that dodge just actively, like super actively, not just, okay, I'm close to Galactic Ace and not going to take this match. I can take that. I mean, I understand it. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people, not going to say names, that have dodged <laughs> just at the end to get their Galactic Ace, but I'm fine with that. I mean, right. I can understand it. But the problem is when you see a hard dodger, which I'm not going to say any names neither because we I think we all know who we're talking about here without saying any particular names. Also, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're, I mean, hey, if, let's say their names because, I mean, if they want to be guests on the podcast, I'll have them. Yeah, all. I mean, Don't give me, that's the thing. It was like yeah, S, what is it, SW52? I'd say he's the biggest one, right? <laughs> mm, Star Wars yeah. 52. Yeah. 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 Not it's the only one, but perhaps the most notorious. Most, or most infamous. infamous. Yeah. Kessler. yeah. Kessler's, yeah. Kessler's an interesting <laughs> one too because Kessler... He, he doesn't just dodge against you. He dodges with you. It's like, when is, it's like, when is this guy playing games? Like, he just dodges everyone all yeah. the time. Like, it's like, what what is yeah. going on? Yeah, Gonk say it perfectly. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> like, why is he dodging on our team? <laughs> he added us as a friend. He added us all as friends so that he could see when we're in game so he can time his searches against us because he plays at the same time as us every day. <laughs> Wow. Well, I have seen yeah. some, uh, there has been some talk of like the higher rank you get, the harder it is to find good games, right? So people are potentially, you know, once you hit Galactic Ace or something, um, you're, I don't know what, you're what, uh, or right before you hit Galactic Ace, you're leaving games to get those perfect s- situations where you can max out your SR points. You get that anxiety about rank, right? And mm-hmm. you're like a Valiant or something or a Legend. And you're like, oh, I'm almost there. I don't want to lose, you know, 10 points every time I, you know, lose it, a game against these Galactic Aces. Well, the problem so is, it's not, and, I mean, Galactic Aces can be more of a balanced loss, so I'm not sure why people do. You might only lose a few points for versus the Galactic Ace, but the, and the Galactic Ace is risking a lot more playing you. But the problem, True. I think, is that the point allocation is really unfair. So, like, there's times where the matchmaking is so bad that we win, you know, 80 to 90 percent of our games but in those games we're only getting one point so it's like okay you, you, yeah. yeah so you win 20 games let's say you get 20 points you lose one you can lose anywhere from 70 to at times i've lost 130 points like it's very frustrating to go 20 and one and be <laughs> negative wow. 100 points or 79 whatever the case may be 70 points 50 points like whatever it is you just there's a thing in video games I was reading about wherein you, you want to be winning, what is it, like, at least a third of the time or something, or you'll, like, basically quit the game. This is, like, mm-hmm. this is like worse than that. This is worse than losing a third of the time because you're winning, but losing more points than if you were losing a third of the time. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me how this... Uh, kind, that... kind of basically defeats the purpose of the ranked mode, actually. I mean, it's yeah. true, it's a struggle, but you should, you should be rewarded by uh-huh. your gameplay like uh yeah. one uh, one example is basically you are let's take for example this happened to me the other day i was on a team uh solo queuing and i got and i had a legend in front of me i still was legend too he dodged he was really close to galactic ace he wasn't a known dodger i mean i didn't i didn't expect that guy to dodge but he dodged but when i saw his uh, sr say okay i understand it and then i got back filled by a placement a player, a guy that was still in his placements. And on the other team, there were really low levels too, like heroes. Perhaps I think there was a hot shot, but they're mostly mid tier heroes, low tier heroes. But I say, okay, let's take this match. Uh, we managed to win the match between all of us. But the thing is that I got one single point for that. I would have lost more if uh, if I had lost, and we'll never know if I had lost because yeah. the player that was supposed to counter me dodged. Hmm. That's the real issue with the dodging system. Like it's not only that you are uh, mm-hmm. how is it say cheating the system to get more SR. You're basically not doing any favor to the team you've been assigned. Yeah, I guess because so. if there's mm-hmm. if there's someone of your level in the team in front and he doesn't dodge or she doesn't dodge. You're go- you're doing a weak favor to the guys you've been assigned with because there's no chance they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be able right. to win that match. This this speaks okay. So this is two things. So I I think what you're saying is the initial matchup 
has the potential for everyone to gain points. Let's say anywhere from five to fifty point, whatever the the the, the threshold is. There, there's some sort of matchup exactly. giving points, and then when a player dodges, it throws that out. So the the back, which now we lead into the other issue, what happens when the person dodges? It affects everyone who's left in the game, which. This is something that Motive has had to play around with a little bit and find that yeah. sweet spot with. There was a point when it was terrible. Like, it literally, because they were looking for an actual person who would fill that, and I think to give that those points back, it would not find them. Backfill would not happen in four minutes. There was a point where you were just like, oh, backfill. Well, okay, I'll see you in four minutes. Yeah, you basically, well you, had, you had to restart the queue, basically. Yeah. Go back again to the main menu, and let's find. Let's start over again. To their credit, and they, it- they recognized that issue right away and they did i mean this was only a, a five-day period maybe before they adjusted that. it was a very limited time frame when that was fixed and uh then it went too far the other direction <laughs> and they had to like they've been clearly honing in on it a little bit i don't think they've addressed it for a bit and it's been in a good place but they still haven't found the place where points are coming back into the lobby mm-hmm. exactly i think um, Apart- rarely anyway interesting yeah I can even remember, this was a ways back to, which speaks to another issue with, with dodging, which I don't even really understand this issue. I think it was, it was you and me, and you had a really high kill game. We're talking like 45 kills on it, but I think we had someone oh, yeah, leave I remember. the game. Didn't we end up a man down, too, in it? Or did we just have terrible fills in it? I can't remember. What, can you remember this one? What do you remember? About it? Yeah, I, re- I remember. We had Actually, we had uh, terrible fills, and I think we had, both teams had the uh, Rage Quitter, quotation marks at some point like we were, at one point we were four before i think mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i don't remember it correctly mm-hmm. but yeah it was pretty noticeable and yeah dodging in game is even worse than dodging uh, pre-match because first you're not going to get a replacement and second uh the sr hit is going to be bigger for the dodger as it should be in mm-hmm. pre-match actually yeah uh because that person as we say the, in the beginning basically conceded the game that way right. by quitting the game or dodging so yeah and it's a uh, it still doesn't fix the issue that whenever someone dodges a, a team before it started the match or after the match started it's basically gonna give a bad experience to his team because number one they're gonna be uh, one man down or one person down and it's gonna be noticeable granted high level players can can carry a 4v5 mm-hmm. but in an equal skill level, uh, usually the most num- uh, the team with most members is going to win. It's pure mathematics, actually, and statistics. But the issue is still there, actually. Uh, you got to play extra hard when you're in a 4v5 because yeah. you got to do two people's job at one, t- at one time. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. And I get why yeah. people attempted to dodge or not mm-hmm. care about this one anymore. counterpoint or, when you're four stack and you get that fill sometimes they are so bad they are feeding so hard it is kind of better when they leave to be honest <laughs> it's yeah, unfair it's to a, say like for the rare occasion yeah but yeah, yeah you're right there, be, it is rare yeah but the benefits uh the benefit the benefits are uh fortunately or unfortunately depending on uh depending on your perspective are not gonna outweigh the drawbacks. Yeah, like it, it's pretty obvious. Always being in a, in a team with one person down, it's always harder. The only advantage I could think about it directly, it's okay. They are not gonna be able to farm players to get morale faster because they have less players. Right. And if they yeah. don't get the kills, it's gonna work uh, against them. Mm-hmm, exactly. It's such you know, and we can kind of talk about. There's like an issue to where the reason people don't want to play these games is because they don't want to lose. Like, there's there's a certain ego there, you know, and you can kind of see it like people people kind of have to accept they're going to lose games. And losing games is, I think, important. Losing games is how you get better because you learn from them, right? Like, I think... Exactly. Yeah. I mean, don't get me... There was a time when Orange Squad, in the time we played, Death Watch was the only other team that was playing, and we would have to play them so often, and we would get spanked and it was terrible <laughs> and i think they would have understand if we backed out from those games but in the long run it made us better to play against them and to learn you know exactly i mean you're gonna learn more from your losses from your loses than from your winnings like winning is good but mm-hmm. the the best teacher i can think of is defeat 
it's not a phrase of mine. I don't remember who did it, but it's not a phrase of mine. But the feed is the best teacher. Yes, of actually. Course. Because it makes it forces you to think, what did I do wrong? What could I have done, I have done better, et cetera, et cetera. And that's one important thing that the Dodgers are missing. Like, okay, you're afraid to lose SR. I get that. But how are you going to know you're good if you don't want to take a match against someone that is supposedly your level? You're not going to be able to test yourself. And you'll never know if you're good or deserving that rank or not. Yeah, a lot of people kind of get stuck in that. I wonder what, though, we can do. What is the solution to all these people dodging? What can, what can we do to fix this? Mm. Well, I'm sure, you know, uh, Motive's probably looking at, um, and they've already had uh, a, a point in time in the game when there was a lever penalty. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's, it's up to them to kind of look at the, that the data and see what's going on and see how to best uh you know fix it on their end i'm not sure there's much we can do culturally within the squadrons community to like deter dodging mm -hmm. um because people are just going to do it it seems like uh, i don't know the advantages the perceived advantages of dodging outweigh the disadvantages for people talking smack or something i'm not sure but it doesn't seem to deter anybody <laughs> from I mean, what i can tell it's like we were talking about earlier though people are you can't hide from like people are no like we've had people come to be like what I'm known as a Dodger. It's like yeah, you're yeah you're known as a Dodger. They're like why? It's like why am I known as a Dodger? It's like is this we've like is this a philosophical question? Yeah, why are you dodging? Like just, we don't know why yeah. do people? We I mean we guess, but you tell us. Like it's that kind of a thing where we really need to make. I think the the number one thing like you said is increase the penalty, but I think it kind of comes down to people. I think maybe a balanced point system, like five points minimum for a win or something like that, a maximum loss even might deter it. I don't want to add a maximum loss. That's kind of the other way. But a, a, a minimum win point should be 100% something that should help people out just to, to keep it going, I think. The important thing is if you make the lever penalty too hard, I think it may jeopardize the community, like the player base, which is already so yeah, low. Struggling. Which is, yeah, something else we could kind of talk about here. How do we also go ahead? Reaver, also, sorry? Uh, if you allow me, uh, you we cannot. Um, it's true that some people is known for dodging, but how many times have you seen someone drop the match? But you don't know if he was dodging or she was dodging, or if she, he, or she had a, a connection issue because those are real too. Definitely, those are those real. Are, yeah, yeah. yeah, that people happens to drop, everyone as well. They drop games, yeah. Yeah, you really can't say for sure. I mean, for the most uh, no. Yeah. Everyone drops here or there. I mean, for me, it's not like a, a so much of an issue, but it does happen to everyone at times, connection to problems, and it's, it, yeah. So you, you, you never really know what's, what is the root cause of them leaving. It seems like sometimes when someone's like, oh, and 10 or whatever, like, yeah, that's probably not connection, though, or <laughs> something in no. that case. <laughs> it, could, it could be. One, one can never say for sure. True. Uh, but the person that experienced that disconnection, like the other day I was playing, uh, I think, with this Smurf account, and suddenly I got disconnected and I couldn't reconnect at all. And uh, some people would think, could think, judging by the score, I wasn't doing great on that game, that it was a rage quit. But no, it was just simply a disconnection. Okay. And I couldn't join. I couldn't join, unfortunately, or rejoin. So, okay, I'll take it. Well, I, and there's nothing I can do about it. So move along, move along. We do like to kind of call out the Dodgers. We have a, a wall of shame in our Discord that we will take screen caps <laughs> of the people and uh, let them know. So we don't let it slide by. I'm curious, when you're playing on your Smurf account, or maybe people, I mean, a lot of people know your, your Smurf account now, but at some point when it was lesser known, did you ever see, you don't have to name names or anything, did you ever see people maybe dodge, dodge you a bit then? Actually, actually, I have a funny story about that. You know someone I played with my Smurf account that was super dodgy and never took a match? It was Grogu, actually. Oh. <laughs> One of the first matches with my Smurf account was against, was against Grogu. And he saw I was in a placement, and he didn't dodge, unsurprisingly. <laughs> okay, he thinks I'm an easy picking here. <laughs> then I started playing normally. I don't. I didn't win for him exclusively. I just played the game normally. Like, okay, uh -huh. I got to give cover to the bombers. I got to kill the uh, the person chasing the support, etc., etc. And then when Grogu saw I was like uh, mid match, eight to one deaths. He just rage quitted the last time. I think he, yeah, definitely he rage quitted the last time I killed him. 
because I, I killed him and bam, he went out. And he was <laughs> playing good. He wasn't having any issues. He wasn't rubber banding. He wasn't playing stri- straight. He wasn't having lag. So yeah, definitely he learned that I was not a baby seal and decided to quit the match before the embarrassment went big, uh, went bigger at that point. Oh, jeez. Well, what do you think? Because uh, you obviously have a, a Smurf account. What do you think? I've seen more and more people talking about getting a Smurf account just so they can play games. And I was like, what does that mean? Are people not able to uh, maybe it takes them too long to connect at their current rank? Uh, maybe they want to play and play and play without having to worry so much about uh, ranking up all the time. Like, what's what's your personal motivation for having a having a Smurf account? It was because first, uh, as you know, the Spanish guys have started to form up a team now for the Calca, but uh, they started really, really short ago, like one month and a half ago. And by that time, I think I was Legend Tier 1 or Legend Tier 2. I was uh, I just recently reached to Legend and he told me, hey, you uh, you want to play with us? Teach us the game. And I thought, okay, if I go with the main account with these guys who have just started the game, they're going to get wrecked by the people I usually play with because I know they'll be looking for matches too. And they'll be in a five stack. And it's going to be a frustrating experience with them. So what did I do? I, uh, I got a new account and said, okay, I'm going to play with you guys in this account so uh, you can learn against players of your level. I restricted myself to playing non-Slayer roles like Bomber, mm-hmm. Support, etc., etc., so they could practice anything they wanted. Right. And eventually they got better. Mm-hmm. They reached the legend pretty fast yeah. or valiant. And I said, okay, now you're ready to go against the big boys here. And I started using the main account, but I didn't ditch the Smurf account. I keep yeah. using it for new people. But <laughs> I can see some people doing a Smurf account to just play a game relaxedly, not caring if they lose or win, whatever. Yeah, sure. I, I've done that. I've I have a Smurf account that I use to like test out different builds and dog fighting and like just done like the fleet battles thing i played like i think like 17 games or something like that over the last like whatever launch of the game or something in fleet battles so i mean i played a little bit from earth 2 just to test stuff out too but i mean it's not i mean i, I don't know what what is the negative of the smurf what is the i guess the problem that is created is because in theory people could play smurf accounts and then just take sr for, i think yeah i think i've actually was mad at you one time i think orange was actually mad at Reaper. yeah i remember that i remember that match sorry sorry it's guys. not even that though see this is what you're talking about rank anxiety though that's really what it was it wasn't that we were actually who cares it's a video game like we were just you're just we were just frustrated at the SR no, I, of the game, so we were kind of mad at you for being on the surf, but it's exactly like you were just working with the Spanish guys, right? Exactly. I was trying to I was trying to train them uh, to, and I was happy to see you on the other team because mm-hmm. I feel okay, guys. This uh, this people is really good, so mm-hmm. this is be your tri- this will be your trial by fire. Mm-hmm. So make the most of it. Make yeah. the most of your game. But yeah. yeah, I could see. Okay, if I win or if we win and we won, we're gonna take away a lot of SR for them. But that's a problem. You're in this game. Uh, you cannot choose who you fight right. unless you're doing a scream or a cost, or, or a custom match. Mm-hmm. But yeah, having a Smurf account, it's a double edged sword. You can help a lot of people with it, but you can also uh, ha- make life harder for the people in front of you because they don't expect a low level guy to play the way uh, you play with your main account. Right. And if they're trying to rank up and you happen to land on a Smurf account that it's uh, Maverick, well, not Maverick, it's too low, but Hotshot <laughs> or Hero against the team of Galactic Aces and they get wrecked, yeah. okay, they're Galactic Aces, they're not going to lose any any rank. But anybody that is trying to rank up is going to be hit so hard, yeah. it's going to hurt. The, uh, yeah, that's funny. We actually saw a Maverick out there. We were like, how has this guy played like 15 games and he's a Maverick? This is crazy. Well, he's a Maverick anyway, or whatever it was, 20 games, I can't remember. But uh, the th- oh, shoot. I was going to say, uh, I totally lost my thought about the Maverick. You're going to say about the rank up. Man, maybe, <laughs> I'd like to say it's too late. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm losing my place, but it's early for me. So I really <laughs> I should remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think it was because yeah. we thought they were extinct. Like at one point we said, no, there are no Mavericks. They're just a myth at this point <laughs> at this season. But no, it turns out they exist. Oh, <laughs> they, I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to ask, okay, so if you've got, um a galactic ace in your stack having you you've been like oh i'll switch to my my smurf because it balances it out though right so because you don't want to be like multiple galactic aces you would be right like that will make it harder for matchmaking. you want to have a galactic ace and so what, what's the, what was the thinking there can you explain that at all well the thinking there is that uh, we've noticed that if you stack 
you're going to get diminishing returns because obviously you're in a coordinated team, in a coordinated party most of the time. And sometimes you don't land against other stacks, maybe against a stack, but a smaller stack than yours. And the game takes that into account when awarding the SR. If that stack has a Galactic Ace and the other team doesn't have a Galactic Ace at all, at all it, you're going to get diminishing returns. We've seen that in matches mm. where people doesn't, didn't dodge us. They were similar to a rank, but we barely got an ESR. Like, I think we only got five or ten for beating, wow. yeah. for beating that people. But, I mean, I think it's fair. I mean, it's fair enough. We're communicating better. We're working together, et cetera, et cetera, while the other team is just uh, everyone for himself right. or herself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the issue. Uh, when I go to the Smurf account with uh, less than Galactic Ace rank, it's to try to give some more SR to the other to our team and to also make the loss less painful for the other team too. In a uh, in a way, like usually, if you get beaten by a Galactic Ace, you're not going to lose that much rank. But right now, my Smurf account is a tier five legend, so it's basically the same level. Yeah, as that's account, true. Yeah, so. you're not, we're talking about it being a Smurf account. So people are probably thinking so it's like a hero three or something perhaps, like mine, and yours is no, it's a legend five. <laughs> <laughs> so the difference is going to be about maybe ten points more of SR loss, which is minimal actually. Yeah, compared to what you would lose in other circumstances against the lower smurf account i don't I, I don't know what i did but like i i just have not my account my my thing is just so ter- i don't understand how i play with everyone who's legends i have like went play all my games with them the same thing but i'm so much it doesn't make sense to me like what what did i do wrong here Reaver? what give me your feedback on me for in this same like how am i stuck at whatever valiant four I don't know. The thing is, the, the, the other problem is that the, the ranking system, I think, still needs some fine-tuning because right now, when you get a placement guy or several, even worse, several placement guys on your team, and I've been there, I was in a duo stack with a guy, and we got three teammates that were in placements. The problem is here that the uh, game takes a placement guy the same rank as the highest rank in right. that team. So they were taken as legends. Okay. They were taken all legends. I think I figured and that it out. is going to hurt a lot. This is what happened to me. I always play formed up in like three, four, three minimum usually, four usually, yeah, five. True. I never mm-hmm. solo queue. The times I solo queue, I do. I'm not. A, I'm not a good solo queue. I admit it. You know, like I can. I cannot carry my team if I if I focus uh, on really, kills. Then there's really not objective. Hard. I can't do enough kills to make the difference. Now maybe in like November I could carry us to kills. The game changed on me, though, I think. Well, not the game. Everyone got a lot better, and I couldn't just, like, get away with whatever. <laughs> like, I have to kind of yeah. had to kind of get better, too. And I'm, I'm not a slayer, but so maybe that's kind of it. So my my solo queue never helps out. Because most, is it necessary to solo queue or duo stack to get Galactic Ace? Can you do, a, do you think, on a pure five stack route? It can be done. I mean, it can be done on a five stack, but it, right now it's not doable on a five stack for two reasons. First, the one we mentioned, the ranking, the, the ranking gains and losses on the system are either too small when you win or too big when you lose. And also, yeah. we got to keep in mind that the player base is really <clears throat> small for this game. Yeah. It's not going to find enough variety of players with, uh, with a really wide uh, spread of skill level or rank level to make the matches uh, kind of... Well, maybe not balance. Balance is not uh, balance is not the word. More like uh, varied matches. Like, yeah. Let's be honest. Many matches are either a Rolf stomp on the other team or a Rolf stomp on your team. <laughs> right. There's sure. hard. There are hardly matches that are kind of balanced out. That oh, this was a sweaty match for both sides. Right. No, when I'm solo queuing, I'm either Rolf stalling with the Rolf stomping with the guys that have been placed, or they the other team is either Rolf stomping. Right. Me. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're either uh, clubbing seals or you kind of feel like the seal a little bit out there in the solo queue. I can see what you mean. Yeah, the matchmaking is is it's tough. Hopefully, the operation is kind of coming to a close here. We're gonna have a new operation. I'm hoping that they, you know, that does bring players back because you know pursuing the rank getting the being like you know i'm thinking it already i'm like this time this operation is time bombs time this is my time i'm thinking maybe hopefully other people feel that way to get in on it uh Uh, what would you guys like to see in the new operation uh any changes for motive well uh i think uh, aside from what we've discussed the minimum gains and the uh maximum losses or whatever whatever they think is good for the uh mm-hmm. for the system i think the most important thing here is uh from the community like from the players is try to 
force quotation marks, a lot of quotation marks there, uh, a change of attitude. Like, let me tell you my experience. When I reached Galactic Ace the other day, I was ecstatic, I'm going to admit it. But then I looked back and I said, okay, uh, how did I get this? It wasn't me. It wasn't yeah. just me. It was everyone. Like, I mean, not just you guys that I play usually often, but everyone. Right. Like the like the the newbies I've been placed, like the, the rivals I had. It was thanks to everyone that I got the Galactic Ace. But when you look back at it, and many people have said it, they were right. Rank doesn't matter. I know it's easy to say for me since I'm already Galactic Ace, but let me tell you one thing. I'm not gonna go for Galactic Ace on the next season. I just mm -hmm. wanna play in, I just wanna play the game right. with whomever it is. Right. It's gonna be frustrating yeah. sometimes, it's gonna be really fun some of the times, but hey, that's how games work. You get good matches that you have a hell of a time, and then you, there's matches that you say, I'm not gonna play this game ever again. And then you come back <laughs> that, and then you come back and then you come back the next day. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, I the, think I mean, the main issue. I think that's the main issue here. Sorry, time, but to, to no, finish this uh, this explanation, people need to learn to enjoy the game, and enjoying the game sometimes uh, needs for you to take the loss yeah. to learn to be a little more humble because there's always going to be someone better than you at something. But most importantly, to show the people that you all want to play this game together. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's what's made me better. One, that, like, I've been willing, like, I mean, I've been in a lot of private matches just working on different things with people, like, having people tell you things. Like, you kind of have to put in that time. You can't just expect to get better necessarily unless you're actually actively doing the things to improve, changing the way you play, like, doing things, listening to people and implementing their suggestions because they're having success. You kind of have to listen to those people. And sometimes I think in the solo queue and stuff, I can get you away from that because people just want to jump in and casually have fun, which you can't really blame them for, but they have to have fun losing as well and understanding that, I think. Well, nobody has fun losing. <laughs> Let's no. be honest. Nobody likes to yeah, lose. But that, not, not, you have to have fun in spite of the losses, I guess, to, exactly. to enjoy a game. You gotta, you gotta cope with that. Yeah. Just like in real life, not everything is gonna go according to your plans. The best mm -hmm. thing you can do, try to take it as best as, best as you can, learn from it, and Keep do keep going, keep improving, keep practicing. I mean, if you didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't be playing this game more once you lose a few times. You just mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm going to move on. And I mean, that's the truth of it, right? Like a lot of people have left because it's a tough game and, you know, hopefully we find the right balance and I want the player base to grow. But just kind of like you were saying, not all galactic aces were created equally, right? There's, there's galactic aces and everyone knows who they are who did not... Uh, Got their, got their dodging, and uh, you just kind of know that when you play him. Like, he's a galactic ace, not really not playing very galactic acey out there. <laughs> and moreover, I can tell you a lot of pilots that right now have less rank than Legend Tier 5 or Tier 4, or even are just playing Valiants that, dude, this guy should be galactic ace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. I mean, it's a lot of time, too, to get it done. I... Uh, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to discuss about it. Did you have anything else you wanted to uh, to add in about you know dodging or matchmaking there, Reaver, that we didn't get to? Mm, not much. I think we covered everything. If any, I would say that uh, even if uh, as passive aggressive as this might sound, it's just a game. And ultimately, I'm playing here not because I want to be the best pilot in the world or being the best Galactic Ace. No, I'm here because I like playing with you guys and uh, having these discussions with yeah. you in the Discord yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. Drama can be fun sometimes too, but it's not the main point. But right. no, seriously, the <laughs> pandemic has forced us to come here. And I think despite the matchmaking needs needed improving and the ranking system too, in the end, I think everybody's here because they love Star Wars, they love the game, and they wanted to meet people to play this game with. And I think we did it. We, yeah. now, we now just need to give it a little push yeah. to have more people in and be more constant. And eventually maybe get a sequel? Yeah. Who knows? Modi, nice. please? I'd love to <laughs> hopefully we can just keep nurturing it. Maybe it'll get there and maybe it'll get it. I think hopefully we've, they've shown enough that to, it will get a sequel or go free to play and maybe that'll help the player base. So Green Fox, anything else to add, buddy? No, I think we covered, uh, I think we covered for this week. Cool. Oh yeah. Um, and, um, oh yeah. On, on one note, the last thing I'll talk about is we've got the, uh, orange invitational that we just posted about the other day. Uh, if you haven't heard about yeah. it, just, uh, yeah, just, uh, to the audience, if you haven't heard about it, it's, uh, 
Uh, it's mm-hmm. a Swiss format. There's eight teams. We've got, you know, the best teams in the galaxy coming out just to do this scrim. There's no winner. It's just a, you know, exhibition of some high-level play and some teams to get some reps in. Uh, it's pretty much, I think, the only time that Galactic Agriculture has scrimmed in, like, months against anyone. So it's pretty cool to see that for sure. We'll at least show one of their games, and I think uh, we'll just see high-level squadrons on display. One change from the announcement the other day is that on squadron... Um, because I'm casting and Gonk's going to be doing, you know, like the, the business stuff during it. And, and Phoenix is, is, you know, at different time zones, so it's tough for him to play. We think we're going to have a yeah. squad replace us actually in it. And we're just going to kind of organize it and have, um, we're talking, well, I'll make an announcement later about that. We got another great squad coming in to replace us. So I think that's kind of the way it's going to be looking right now. Awesome, man. Well, it'll still be a super fun time, even, mm-hmm. if, even if you're not behind the cockpit. Yeah, know? for sure. So I think that's the everything. Show, the show will be great. The oh, yeah, we're excited great. to do it. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for checking out this episode. Reaver, thanks so much for being on it, buddy. You're you have... welcome, and thank you. thank you for letting me in, too. Do you I have anything? Hey, yeah, man. You don't really stream or, or do anything. Is there anything you'd like to promote, though? You don't have to if you don't feel like it. I'll just let it throw it out there. No, I just like <laughs> I just want to keep playing the game with all of hey, you guys. But like, if you know I I'll put a link a... to your meme B-Wing video, actually. You did make that one for the community before. Oh, yeah. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to work on a Fisherman uh, meme now. <laughs> oh, you yes, yes. yes the meme the meme with the man, support. The yeah, for man. Sure. <laughs> Look out for that one coming uh, on a Reddit post uh, near you. And what? <laughs> But the one thing I'd like to say is that if anybody that's not on the discords and wants help with the game for the next season and the rest of the, and the reminder of this one, albeit it's only a few days, I don't mind grouping up with everyone that wants and wants to try to learn the game or direct him to a squad that he or she will enjoy playing. Like, we need to be more cohesive, guys. Jeez, I mean, man, solo queuing is good. Yo, it's required, but the community we, needs to grow we and do need- be more. I mean, oh shit, this is the end of the podcast. And I'm just spitballing. Maybe the Reddit, maybe Reddit needs to have something that's like, I don't know, like a, a they, like not just like an LFG, but an LFG where it's like, I'm a community leader. I'm forming up with new people right now to show them the ropes, kind of a thing. Hmm? Like maybe could be. I don't know. Maybe we could do something like that. Something to think about. Anyways, I really appreciate you saying that, and that's awesome that uh, you're putting that out there for people. And I hope someone jumps on board. I think that's everything for this yeah, episode. Man. And thanks for checking it out. I'll catch you guys later on the next episode of the Star Wars Squadron Podcast. Five one seven scanner control. Five one seven scanner control.